Is it really possible to gain 50% more muscle in just 12 weeks by making this one change to your training? I've spent the last 10 years working with over 1,000 people to really find out what is the world's best training split. You've tried it all. Bro splits, power building splits, push-pull leg training splits, but have you really figured out what works for you? Today, I'm going to teach you the exact training split that is going to build 50% more muscle as proven by science. If you'd like some actual help or an exact training program of how to set up your perfect training split, stay tuned until the end of the video when I go through live building out the perfect training split. When it comes to building muscle effectively, one of the long debates in fitness circles is what's better, the bro split or a high frequency split? Both have their advocates and both work. But the real question is, which one build the most amount of muscle mass. So we have the bro split. It's been a staple in the bodybuilding world for decades, which allow for very high volume and isolated workouts. On the other hand, we have high frequency training like upper lower splits that allow you to train each muscle group effectively more than once per week. And we can't overlook the research that shows that more frequent muscle stimulation does lead to more muscle growth. But does this mean that it's actually better for you? Let's break down some of the research so that we can get a definitive answer on which training split is best. Studies show that training each muscle group twice per week, like an upper lowest split, can build up to 48% more muscle than its comparison to a bro split. A 2016 meta-analysis posted in the Journal of Sports Sciences found that individuals training muscles twice or more per week saw significantly greater hypertrophy than those who trained once per week. Experts suggest that this is because muscle requires consistent stimulation in order to grow optimally. By training the muscle more frequently with moderate volume, you're taking advantage of repeated muscle protein synthesis, which is the process where muscles repair and grow larger. In contrast to the bro split, where a muscle group only gets a chance to be stimulated just once per week. Leading researcher in hypertrophy, Brad Schoenfeld, emphasizes while the bro split can be highly effective for very well-trained bodybuilders, it's not the case for the majority of people or an average Joe like ourselves who would benefit from more frequent stimulation. So if your goal is faster muscle growth and you're just an average Joe, an upper lower split might just be the best choice for you. So you're probably asking yourself, if I train more often with more frequency, how can I recover from that? I already struggle to recover now. So the difference is, is that the volume does matter. More evidence was shown in 2019 that overall training volume might be just as important as the training frequency. So with a higher frequency split, your volume has to be appropriate. In your traditional once per week training split, your training volume is very high naturally. You could be performing anywhere between 10 and let's say 16 working sets of that muscle group in that one session. If you was to repeat this multiple times per week, you could have the opposite effect and not build as much muscle. So therefore, your training volume per session with a high frequency training split has to be spread out evenly throughout the week. So if you are someone who completes 14 working sets of a muscle across one session per week, maybe look at spreading that 14 working sets across two to three sessions. That way, you can take advantage of the repeated muscle protein synthesis that again is shown to allow for greater muscle gains. Now, I know a lot of you watching this will be very apprehensive about changing your training and training with less volume and more frequency. You might be thinking, well, I'm making excellent progress as it is training like my favorite bodybuilder. Because of course, we can look at many pro bodybuilders who train just once per week and have one of the greatest physiques on the planet. But my recommendation to you is be very open to learning, open to trying new things, and potentially being open to much more muscle mass. You have to remember that you're in your training for the long haul. Many of us want to be training for our entire lives. That gives us plenty of time to build the physique that we want and try new things in the process. So now let's look at the advantages and disadvantages of both training splits in their truest form. The bro split with a once a week frequency means that you can train the muscle just once per week and allow for ample opportunity for recovery. You could argue that this allows for high amounts of training volume and a minimal chance of injury. However, we cannot forget what the research shows and that's that less frequent muscle stimulation does lead to less muscle gain in the average lifter. 
So how does a traditional bro split work? Well, generally we break it down into five training days. Let's start with Monday. So Monday is normally international chest day. And for your chest day, you might look at four to five exercises all ranging between two and four working sets. On a Tuesday, you would train your back. Again, four to five working exercises for two to four working sets. Wednesday, you would have a break from your upper body, allowing that extra recovery, and you would train your legs. For the average person, they generally need quite high volumes of training in order to see good muscular growth in the legs. So therefore, we could train with a higher training volume on this specific leg day. On a Thursday, we would train our shoulders in isolation. Again, looking at four to five exercises, anywhere between two and four working sets per exercise. That leaves us with Friday, where we would isolate our arms, so biceps and triceps, looking at three to four exercises for each muscle group, ranging from two to four working sets. So this is how you would build out a traditional bro split or once a week training split. Does this look like something that you're doing now? Or does this look ideal for you and your future of your training? Or should you move over to a higher frequency, upper lower training split and see the additional benefit of more muscle mass? So now we've looked at the advantages and disadvantages of bro splits and we've built out your training week. Now let's look at the highly researched upper lower split and the advantages and full training program that I'm going to design with you. So the first advantage that we talked about is the frequent muscle protein synthesis stimulation. The second advantage is the fact that 48 to 72 hours has been proven that is all the recovery a muscle needs before it gets stimulated again. However, a drawback might feel like the workout is less focused as you would like it to be and you might get caught up in doing too much training volume per session. So that you don't get caught up in that, let's build out the perfect upper lower split. So on a Monday, you're going to train upper body. You're going to start off with your chest as the primary focus muscle and you're going to complete any form of press. This could be a flat barbell press, an incline, a smith machine, a plate loaded press, dumbbell press, any of the kind. You're going to complete two to three working sets of anywhere between eight and 20 reps. After you've done your main press, you're going to complete some form of fly. This could be a dumbbell fly, a pec deck machine, cable fly or anything very similar. For this, you're going to perform two working sets anywhere between eight and 20 reps. So straight away, we've done four to five working sets for chest and that is us done with the chest for that workout. This leads us into exercise three and muscle group number two, which is the shoulders. Personally, I like to start with a side lateral raise to pre-fatigue the shoulders, with some very high reps and large amounts of blood flow. For this, we would complete two to three working sets of 15 to 20 reps. After you perform the lateral raises, you're going to move into some form of shoulder press. This could be a pin loaded shoulder press, plate loaded shoulder press, Smith machine shoulder press, or dumbbell shoulder press. You're going to perform two working sets anywhere between eight and 15 reps. After this, you are finished with shoulders and you're going to move into back. For this, we pick one exercise, and my personal preference is a chest supported machine row. This allows for very isolated contractions and allows your lower back to not get more fatigued. For this exercise, I want you to perform four working sets anywhere between seven and 12 reps. Once we're done here, we're going to move on to arms, so biceps and triceps. You're going to perform two, maybe three working sets anywhere between 12 and 20 reps. On Tuesday, we're going to move into our lower body session. Exercise number one is going to be for the quads, a leg extension as a pre-fatigue and a warm up for the knees. We're going to do two to three working sets anywhere between 15 and 20 reps. After this, we work the opposite and we warm the hamstrings along with the knees and we're going to perform either a seated hamstring curl or a lying hamstring curl for two to three working sets anywhere between 12 and 15 reps. Now that we're nice and warm, we're going to move into our main compound work. And this could be any form of squat from barbell squat to pendulum squat, hack squat, anything that you prefer or that you have access to. For this, I would recommend two very intense working sets anywhere between eight and 15 reps. For your fourth exercise, I would always recommend some form of unilateral or single leg exercise in order to help with any imbalances. For this sake, we're going to do a Bulgarian split squat for two working sets of 12 to 15 reps. After this, we're going to focus on the inner thigh with a seated adduction machine, two sets of 20 reps. If you'd like, you can put calves on the end, but let's be real, nobody trains calves. On Wednesday, you're going to rest. 
So this leads us into Thursday, which is our second upper body day, and we need to change the emphasis in which muscle group is getting targeted first. Because the back came later in the first session, we're gonna start off with back this time around. Exercise one, we're going to do a cable lat pull down for three to four working sets. Exercise two, we're going to do some form of cable row, barbell row, or any other form of row for two working sets. Exercise three, you're going to do a chest dip for two to three working sets. And exercise four, you're going to do some form of pec fly machine for a giant set. And a giant set is 40 reps where you can complete only 15 reps for the first portion until you hit failure. And then you're going to complete rest pause sets where you rest 15 seconds every time you fail until you hit 40 reps. After this, you're going to do a standing cable lateral raise for four sets, around 15 to 20 reps. And then we move into the biceps and triceps, two to three working sets, anywhere between 12 and 20 reps. So now we're into our second leg day on Friday, and I want us to do almost the polar opposite of what we did in session one. This time around, we start with the hamstrings, seated hamstring curl or lion hamstring curl. Then we're going to do a single leg leg extension, two to three working sets on both of these exercises. After this, you're going to do some form of 45 degree or seated leg press. Then you're going to move into a seated abduction. Again, two working sets on both of these exercises, and then we can finish with calves if we like. This now allows us to rest on Saturday and Sunday. Alternatively, you could rest on Saturday and then continue your training week with upper body one again on the Sunday. So I recommend you give this training split a try. I've done it with many, many clients of mine. I've done it on my own and I've yielded way better results with this style over once a week training. So do you think this style of training will work? Do you think it will work for the average Joe or will it only work for random people? Let me know in the comments below. If you like the video and you like the educational content of this video, please consider subscribing to the channel and it would really help out if you left a like on the video. But for now, I'll see you all in the next episode.